right here is a 2014 MacBook Pro, a 15 inch to be, to be frank with you. And I wanted to talk about, is it a good purchase nine years later in 2023? Yes, we're doing more MacBook Pro videos. So this MacBook Pro is actually my wife's old laptop that I was meaning to sell. And since I hadn't sold it yet, I figured why not make a video on it? And this, this laptop has become a much more interesting proposition over the last couple of years because of the price and how much it's decreased over the past few years. These things can be had pretty easily anywhere from $250 to $300 in America at least. You could probably get an even better deal if you were to find something locally on Facebook. That's just on eBay. That's a very quick cursory check that I made, which means that this laptop, while it doesn't support the latest and greatest Mac OS, it does support up to Big Sur. It also has a 15 inch screen. And as everybody knows, MacBook screens are typically the best screens. So it's got a really good screen on it. And the keyboard is remarkable. I really, really enjoy using this laptop. I've used it now for a few days. And for what I've been using it for, it's wonderful. Is it the most powerful laptop on the planet? Definitely not. It's kind of nowhere close to the most powerful laptop. I mean, it's nine years old. I don't know what we're expecting here. But what it does have is a quad core i7. Doesn't have great battery life, but it has enough power to do basic word processing, check your uh, investment accounts, do basic tasks that you use a computer for. Am I gonna be editing videos on this computer? No, I'm not. I, I don't like editing videos on this computer because I, there's no reason to. I mean, I have a MacBook Pro that's more powerful than this, and I have a gaming computer that has a, an A-core Ryzen. So I would never edit videos on this. I don't think it makes sense to. You can get a way more powerful computer that costs about this much money with a six core and even an eight core processor. So definitely that's not, that's not why you'd buy this. You're not going to buy this for the power, but you are going to buy it because it's a very decently priced Apple laptop. The reality is, is that Apple laptops hold a premium. They're built with premium products and they have a premium because they connect with your iPhone. They're the only laptops that do that, that connect with an iPhone. And really they're, they're the only laptops that work as seamlessly with your iPhone or any other phone. No other laptop works seamlessly with your smartphone the same way a MacBook does. Now it doesn't have the latest and greatest security patches and all the latest and greatest features that you get with that. But the reality is, is that Mac OS versions haven't really changed in the last 10 years. I mean, they've added a handful of features here and there. A lot of them were just bad though, <laughs> like the T2 chips. There, there aren't a lot of great features that they've added. So you, you still have the ability to technically upgrade this SSD because it's removable. That doesn't mean I necessarily would, but it's it's possible that you could do it if you felt like yours was getting slow. Maybe your SSD just needs replaced. The battery, again, is easily replaceable. The back plate here, just a few screws, and then you take it off. It's very easy to access the inside. The rest of it isn't really replaceable. Uh, it's a MacBook still. <laughs> I mean, they, they, nine years ago, they didn't make it easy to replace CPUs and GPUs, so that doesn't mean it's easy here. But you get a great keyboard, and the mouse, the cursor is actually really remarkable. I've been using a 2018 MacBook Pro for the longest time, two, three years now. And I noticed with that thing is it's got the haptic feedback, which means that it just vibrates. It, it doesn't actually click down. And there are so many times when I'm clicking, because I've been using MacBooks for a really long time, so I got used to the actual physical click. So I will click in the very lower left portion of the trackpad a few times and it just it won't register because I'm clicking between the trackpad and the body of the MacBook and it just doesn't register that whereas on here it does because that's how I used to click on these laptops and that's really nice is that the it's that a game changing feature no another nice thing is that it it has USB it has USB A ports and a uh, an SD card reader and it's got MagSafe and and uh and Thunderbolt 2. Does that mean that those features are life-changing features? No, they're not. You can get a dongle. I have a dongle, it's fine. It's kind of a pain in the butt every single time I need to use the USB with my current MacBook Pro the 2018. I gotta run downstairs, scramble for five minutes, look for the dongle. Where the heck did I put it? I always put it here, why is it not here? So that's it's nice having that. Is it the, is it a, the world's best feature? No. But if you had 250 bucks, and you really wanted a Mac computer, and you really wanted something portable, and you were somebody that was writing a book, writing blogs, if you were just doing basic word processing like your taxes, those types of things, you're working in Excel, or I guess, I guess in this case you'd be working on numbers, if you're doing those types of things and you really wanted a Mac, you were just, I'm not, I'm not getting anything else other than the Mac, I really want one, I like the build quality, I like this, I like that. This is honestly not a bad purchase for 250 bucks or cheaper. 300 bucks starts to get to that point where, well, for 300 bucks, you get a way more powerful Windows laptop that's a lot newer, that has 
you know, that potentially could do even more than what this laptop can do. But for a MacBook, and that's that's the big caveat here, is for a MacBook, this is a good laptop. If you're gonna be editing 1080p video, 720p video, this is a good laptop for that. Again, you get iMovie for free. There are so many advantages with Mac OS that comes with this laptop, and one of them is iMovie. The software is really good. And that's a free editing software that's pretty powerful. It's not quite as powerful as Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro, which is what I use, but it's good enough. I, I edited a lot of videos for this channel on iMovie, and that comes free with a laptop. So you pay the $250, but you also get a lot of software that comes for free. So you're paying probably $150, $200 for the actual body and the actual specs on the inside but the, the rest of the money is the free software that apple provides now long term is this going to be the best laptop to have probably not i mean the reality is is it's it's a nine-year-old laptop so you're gonna ha you might have problems if the cpu dies all of a sudden if the, if the if the motherboard dies if if the if the uh, graphics card dies if those things die you're out of luck i mean you're out of luck that's it that's just the reality is you're gonna lose a lot of stuff but the good thing is with these laptops is that the SSD is removable. So a lot of that stuff should be recoverable, but it's just, you know, it's a nine year old laptop. So th that's where, that's where I'm struggling with it is like for $300 to buy a nine year old laptop. That just seems insane. I know you could get a Mac mini with an M1 chip for probably just a hundred or $200 more. But the reality is, is if you can only afford 250 bucks, you can't afford a hundred, 200 more. And then on top of that, a monitor on top of that, a keyboard on top of that, a mouse, you can't afford those extra things. So I, I understand that. So that's why this laptop where it sits, it's not a bad proposition. I love the keyboard typing on this thing. It makes typing on the 2018 MacBook pro keyboard feel like complete junk. It feels like a complete downgrade. We all know that. So if you're doing certain things on this laptop where you could save a lot of your information to the cloud, if you're working on a book or a blog post where everything is just sort of saved in the internet, then honestly, this is not a bad purchase. If you want something to edit video and edit photos, you can buy this. I wouldn't say it's the best purchase. It's it's an old MacBook. That's just what it is. It's a nine-year-old MacBook. So at the time, it was a little underpowered and the software is really good, but it's just it's, it's a nine-year-old MacBook. I mean, that's just what it is. It's an old laptop. So I would suggest against buying this laptop if you're going to be editing video, editing photos. But again, if you only have 250 bucks and you really want a MacBook and you really want a Mac, it is, it is not a bad buy. It, is it the best purchase ever? Probably not. You could probably build or buy a used Windows computer for a very similar price that's significantly more powerful. But if you don't want Windows, I get that. So I would say if you, if you only have 250 bucks, if you really want a Mac and you really want it to be portable, it's not a bad laptop to buy. The 2013s, 2014s, 2015s, they're not bad laptops to buy. Be wary of the ones with the NVIDIA cards because those are more likely to fail. More parts moving around, more parts that can fail. I would look for the ones that only have dedicated Intel graphics just because it's just one less piece to fail. And the power, the difference you get with the graphics card, you're not even gonna really notice it. So. I would just get the one with the Intel Iris graphics and that's it. Save yourself a few bucks and that's it. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, please, please, I don't know. Let me know. I hate asking for subscriptions. I will see you guys in the next one. This has been Scott with Techno Eclipse. Peace out.